Πώς το κάνει ο κόσμος. Δε θες να μάθεις. Όχι. Άνοιξε. Άνοιξε. For the past 29 years, one man has dedicated his life to watching movies with the single goal of separating the thumbs up from the thumbs up there, you know what. That man is Richard Krauss. Welcome to This Week on Movies! Lights up! Uh, welcome to This Week on Movies. This week, I'm going to tell you all about some movies that are guaranteed to scare the pants off you. You can't trust them. Watch them. As horror concepts go, The Thing is a pretty scary one. First seen in the 1951 movie The Thing from Another World, and then again in John Carpenter's classic 1982 version, The Thing is an alien who takes over people's bodies. It literally is what it eats. This thing can, and probably has, replicated a person. We're seeing it again now in The Thing, a 2011 movie released this week on iTunes, which is both a little bit more and a little bit less than the two movies that preceded it. There are a couple of things that are new about the prequel. We learn where the creature came from. We learn how it does the things that it does. Also, the special effects way outclass the special effects from either 1982 or 1951. I suppose that shouldn't be a big surprise. The 2011 prequel is a good creature feature and it has a lot of really gruesome moments, but the tension and the suspense of the 1982 John Carpenter movie is missing. I can't believe we're going to be a squatter. I know, we must be nuts. That's all right. So if you know what he's doing, he's had it before, haven't you? Bolt cutters, courtesy of the sculpture department. Once we're in, that's when the law becomes our source of protection. It's, it's unlawful what we're doing, but it's not illegal. That's... Big enough for you? Spider Hole is a down and dirty Irish horror movie about four students who take a page from the Occupy Movement's handbook and squat in an abandoned building in lieu of paying rent. Of course, because this is a horror film, the next morning they wake up to find the doors locked from the outside. Down in the basement is a murderous surgeon who picks off his victims one by one. Spider Hole wants to emulate movies like Saw and Hostel, but where those movies both had a real sense of demented glee about the horrors that they were presenting on screen, Spider Hole doesn't. It's way too serious for its own good. Perhaps a little bit more tongue in cheek humor, and this movie could have been a lot more campy fun. Knowledge of knowledge. In Pulp Fiction, what kind of burger does Jules take a bite of? That would be the Big Kahuna Burger. It's a brand of hamburger that Tarantino puts in all his movies. Which diaper company paid to have their products mentioned in Three Men and a Baby? It was Pampers that paid $50,000 to have their diapers mentioned in the movie. Hey, you just mentioned Pampers here. That's got to be worth at least 50 bucks. Pampers, Pampers, Pampers. Okay, give me a smile. Yeah. Gino, are you sure we're going the right way? I've never been lost in my life. <laughs> There's only one way out of this chamber, and that's down the pipe. The descent is scary. Scream like a little girl scary. Close your eyes and think of something else scary. Hold me, I'm scared scary. It's the story of a group of thrill-seeking female friends who go spelunking and find that there's a lot more at the bottom of the cave than they bargained for. Now, a big yawning cave is the perfect place to host a horror film. It's dark and everyone has a fear of the dark. It's claustrophobic and you never know exactly what's lurking around the next corner. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
The Descent is a movie that plays on those primal fears. It's exciting, it's thrilling, and you never know where this film is going. This is a movie that will leave you feeling unsettled. It's a movie that'll make you want to run home to your mother. Welcome to Celebrity Picks. I'm here with Caleb, owner of Sacred Bones Records. And he's going to tell us about one of his favorite 90s Italian horror movies, Cemetery Man. I, I love Cemetery Man. It's, it's just, it's entertaining and it's, it's got everything that you want in it. The catchphrase is, zombies, guns, and sex, oh my. There's buckets of blood, there's bare breasts. There's lots of Italian men. There's zombies riding motorcycles. There's a, a, a love story with a with a decapitated head. I mean, what else do you need, really? If you had to name one favorite thing about Cemetery Men, what would it be? At one point, there's a busload of Boy Scouts that die and have to be buried in this cemetery. And then, like everyone else, they come back to life. And so, you know, there's one point where he's just shooting Boy Scouts left and right. And that's hilarious, right? I mean, <laughs> I would be very surprised if you didn't love it. All right, Caleb, thanks so much for telling me about Cemetery Man. You're uh, welcome. Can't wait to go watch some blood, guts, score, boobs, zombies riding motorcycles, and all the above. Mm -hmm. All right, see you guys next time. A Saturday morning matinee of Paranormal Activity was the first time that I ever heard anyone scream at a movie. Now, I don't mean a little whimper followed by an embarrassed laugh. I mean an open-throated, full-on howl of terror. People like to be scared when they go to the movies, and many of the movies that I've talked about here today have scenes that aren't exactly ready for prime time. But I had to wonder, what makes people want to be scared while they're watching films? For the answer, I turn to two people who have been making audiences feel uncomfortable for years. The quick answer came from director Alfred Hitchcock, who said, people like to be scared when they feel safe. A longer answer came from Guillermo del Toro, the creator of the eerie pale man character in Pan's Labyrinth and the deadly scarab from Kronos. We try to look for the extraordinary in our ordinary lives, he told me. That's just the way that we behave as spiritual beings, and we look to horror movies to give us extraordinary experiences without taking the risks. If you're scared about having nothing to watch, here are some suggestions. Drive is long on silence, big on anti-heroes, and rather violent, but it's also one of the most intriguing movies available on iTunes so far this year. In Time, a new sci-fi film starring Justin Timberlake and Amanda Seyfried has an interesting-ish premise, but unfortunately there's not enough quality time in the movie to earn a recommendation. The scariest thing about the psychological drama Dreamhouse is that stars Daniel Craig and Rachel Weisz agreed to be in it. This one redefines the word daft. There is probably a good movie to be made about the color wall in hockey or the first generation Canadian experience of the game, but Breakaway isn't it. Well, that's a wrap for the scariest edition ever of This Week on Movies. Thanks for watching, and be sure to join us again next time when I tell you all about everything that's new and cool and available for download right here on iTunes. In the meantime, remember, I watch bad movies so you don't have to. Lights out. Spider hole. Spider baby. Spider baby. <laughs> spider baby. Spider baby. David Bowie and the spider babies from Mars. You have just watched This Week on Movies starring Richard Krause. Guests of This Week on Movies stay at friends' houses because there is no budget to put them up at a hotel.